Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're going to be looking at destructible terrain. Let's get started. So first of all I just want to do a really big thank you to howtoconstructdemos.com. The code you're seeing today is very much inspired by their destructible terrain code and if you've never seen this website before there's just hundreds of really amazing fantastic construct examples that you can download for free so feel free to check it out and support them. I'll put a link in the description below. So getting started then, what do we need? Well the first thing we're going to do is just insert a new object. I'm actually going to grab a tile map. Now the tile map is actually going to be the big part of running our destructible terrain. I'm going to hit the blank page button at the top to clear everything. And then I'm just going to grab any random color. I'm going to go for about a brown color to make it look like a sort of dirt color. And then just fill in this entire square. And then just press X. Now once you use a tile map, you'll get this new option that appears here. If you haven't got this option for any reason, you can just go to the view page, go to bars, and put on the tile map bar. And at the moment, you can see that our tiles are 32 by 32, just as it's written down here. I'm going to adjust this to be one by one, just like so. Now, in terms of this space, this space is way bigger than we need it to be, so we can actually shrink this down. And actually, I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to edit this image, resize, and we'll go by 64 by 64. And there we go, there's our new tile grid and we can zoom in on this. Now what we can actually do is we can grab a pencil tool and we can start putting in our terrain if we want to. Now you can see it's very, very small. So what we can do is grab a square tool, give ourselves a bit more room to play with. And then again, we can drag in and start making our terrain, just like so. And what's really nice about the tile map is each of these tiny pixels, even these tiny ones down here that we created, all have a hitbox, all have collision, especially once we right click and give it the solid behavior. Now, once we've finished our tile map and we're happy with it, we can just click on this arrow here and then click off. And then what I'd recommend if you're on the premium version of Construct is actually keep this to its own layer so you don't accidentally click and drag it. Um, and then you can just lock that layer. If you're on a free version, then one thing you can do is you can just lock the layer, lock selection, it means you can't click on it anymore. It does mean you have to right click, lock, and then unlock everything on that layer each time, which is just a bit of a pain. So let's add in a player now. So I'm just gonna go to sprites. I'm just gonna add in a player of some sort to walk around my destructible terrain, just like so. Hit X and just resize him. And then just for my player, I'm just gonna edit behaviors and I'm just gonna add in the platform behavior. And once I hit play, you can see that I can actually walk up and down this terrain. So it actually feels like proper terrain. So that's our first part, but it's not very destructible at the moment. So let's add in some destructible features. First thing we need is I'm gonna create a mouse because I'm gonna use this to be my tool of destruction. So when I click somewhere, it will destroy part of the landscape. And now we can move on to our event sheet. So first thing I'm gonna do is we're actually gonna create a function. And we're gonna call this function anytime we want to destroy part of the terrain. It just means we don't need to have lots of the same code because the code's a little bit mathematical to keep it really simple for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it blast and it doesn't need to return anything, but we are going to add in some parameters. I'm going to say in order to use this function, you need to provide the X coordinate that you want to hit. You also need to provide the Y coordinate. And then finally, because this is going to be a circle that we're going to destroy, we're also going to add in a radius. So if you can provide these three, then you can make use of the blast function. I'm going to click on the left side and we're going to add in a blank sub event and then just double click on it. Next we're going to go to system and scroll down until we see this option for a for loop. Now we're not going to give it a name but what we want to do is we want to do minus radius to positive radius. So that will repeat in all the necessary squares that we need. Before we continue we also need a local variable so we're just going to add a local variable here called dx and set that to zero and then we're gonna set the value of dx during our loop. So system, set value of dx to, and this is the really mathsy bit. I'm not gonna explain this too much because I'm gonna tell you now I don't really understand it, but it does the job. So we're gonna take these square roots 
and then it's going to be radius squared minus loop index and then squared again. Then next we're going to add an action, go to our time map and there's this lovely option called erase tile range. And then this is going to ask for four different properties. So let's go through each one. Our first one is going to be minus dx plus x. Our next one is going to be the loop index plus y. Then we're going to have 2 times dx, and then our height is going to be 1. Again, please check out their full version. It's got a bit more description in the code to tell you a bit more about this. But the main thing is you've done the hardest bit of today's video. Final thing we need to do then is add an event, go to our mouse, and we're just going to do on click. Check the left button's clicked, and now we can make use of this brand new function that we've created. So we're going to go to functions. We're going to go to blast, and for the x, we're going to go for mouse.x, and for the y, mouse.y. For the radius, I'm going to set this to 50, but again, it's just how much damage do you want this to cause. Let's hit play. So if I click anywhere, you'll see that it actually destroys the terrain, and this will actually affect my object as well. So my object can now fall and make its way into this sort of gap here. And then we click again, it would actually fall off the map and if we can go about and just destroy the rest of this if we want to. So we've now got destructible terrain, but our terrain is a bit weird at the moment. Let's show you some different ways that you can change and adjust your terrain. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two new objects. The first object we're going to create is a terrain adder. So we're going to go to terrain adder, and what I'm going to do is just take this any shape. I'm going to go green, which is sort of the same that they did in their tutorial, and then just place it somewhere on the map like so. So let's place it here. Now what this will do is this will create a square block of terrain, once we've put the code in, obviously. And then what we also want to do is add a terrain remover. And this will do the opposite. Wherever we place it, it will remove that terrain. So terrain remover. And... Again, I'm going to follow theirs and make it red. So I'm going to squeeze this in and I'm going to place it around about here. Let's make it a bit longer. So what we want to do is instead of us drawing the map each time, I also want to turn this green block into a chunk of brown destructible terrain. And then anything that's in this red block, I just want to be removed completely. This means we can create more destructible terrain much easier and much faster without having to draw it all out using the tile map, which is just a bit of a pain. So how do we implement this? We're going to go back to our event sheet. I'm going to do this as two different functions. So the first function we're going to do is called add terrain. And then the second one we'll do is remove terrain, but we'll do that after because we can copy and paste a lot of the same codes. So first one we'll do is right click on the green arrows and either add in a blank sub event or a sub event and go to system, scroll down, and we want this option called for each. And we do this for each terrain adder. Next what we're going to do is add an action, take our terrain adder, and we're going to set visible, and make sure it's set to visible. And the second thing that you can add, and this is definitely an optional thing, is we can set the blend mode. So set blend mode here, and source at top. Now what this will do is when we're changing our terrain adder to our terrain, we're still using the same tile map, so everything's going to be brown. By doing this source on top, it will actually use the colors and the design that you've got of the terrain adder. So if you want to make this look like a concrete building, then it'll keep the concrete design instead of using our brown tile map, which is just really, really nice to use. Once we've done that, then we can add in our next blank sub event or sub event. And this is going to be a system and back to our for loop. Now we're going to give this one a name because we actually need two for loops. So given that a name means we can distinguish easily between the two different loops. So this is going to be x. I'm going to do train.adder.bbox left. So this is the bounding box. And the reason we're doing it this way, which is really, really clever of them for doing it this way, is it means that we can actually create some more interesting shapes. We're not limited to a box to add or remove. I'll show you how we can implement that a bit later. The second one is bounding box right or B box right. Next, what we're going to do is add our blank 
or sub events and then go to system and we need to repeat the same thing again for y so we're going to do for change the name to y and you've probably guessed it at this point but we're going to take our terrain adder this time we're going to do bbox top and bbox bottom Next, we're going to right-click one last time and either add your sub-event or blank sub-events. Go to System. We're going to use this option called Pick by Overlapping Points. Now, we want to pick our terrain adder here. And what we want to do is we want to use Loop Index. Now, because we've got two loops, it's going to refer to the last loop index, which is Y. But because we've gave them a name, we can actually take that name as one of our parameters and then do the exact same for the Y as well. And then finally, we can actually add in our terrain. So we're just going to do tile map, scroll down, and we're going to set tile. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to do loop index, brackets, X and speech marks. Same for loop index. And then bracket Y and speech marks. And then tile, we can keep this as zero. Essentially, every single tile has now got a number, but they're all brown tiles, so it doesn't matter and state will keep as normal. So now we've got a terrain function and what we can do is we can just call this using an on start of layout. So we can just scroll down and say when the layout starts, add terrain. So also means you can use this without having to make use of the on start of layout function. So again, we could have this just one giant block of code, but again, this just gives you that little bit of extra control. So if you want to change something, if you want to have a game where you can add in your own terrain and then change it to the tile map, you can do that now. So let's hit play. Now, if we do a test, you can see that we click and nothing's actually happening, but there are these brown pixels around the edge. Now, this is due to something that I don't quite understand. Go to layer zero and just set it to transparent. It's definitely something to do with the blend mode. Again, I've not messed about too much with the blend mode, but if we run it again now, we can now click and actually remove our new train adder that we've just added. And because we've used that blend mode source on top, we actually keep the green design. So if we were to change this to a different design, we get to keep that as well. Now you probably don't want a black background for your whole game. So all you need to do is just right click and insert a layer below. This will be layer one. You can then pick whichever color you want for this layer. And now we can click anywhere and remove the terrain just like we did before. So let's quickly add this remover block now. So instead of creating a square of green, it will remove a block of red this time. So we're going to go to our event sheets. We're going to take our entire function to add terrain and copy and paste it. We're going to double click on it and let's rename it to remove terrain. And then right click, replace object, and replace any mention of terrain adder with terrain remover. And the final thing, instead of setting tile, we're going to hit back and we're going to erase tile. And believe it or not, that is it. So I'm just going to remove this function down. Now, what I quite like to do is just take these two functions, place them above. I quite actually have my mouse a bit further down. So we have our functions all at the top, we have our on style layout, and then any mouse clicks after. And I'm just going to add in a brand new function called remove terrain. So add the terrain in first and then it will remove any bits in red after. So one last thing I forgot actually is we just need to go to our remove terrain and we're going to get rid of this set blend mode on top. And instead of this set visible, we're going to make sure this is invisible. If not, when the player overlaps this red square, the player will turn red and you'll be able to see the effect. And then we're just going to actually go back to our on start of layouts. And after we've done all these actions, it's really important that we take our player and just move them to the top. If we don't do this, what's going to happen is when they go to the green terrain, they're going to turn green. When they go to the area that was red terrain, they're going to turn red. So that fixes that by putting the player on top. Let's do a test. So you can see now where our red square used to be. That line has been taken up. We can now click as well. We can even get into that gap there. And there we go, there's our new terrain. So not only can we draw our own terrain like we did to begin with, we can create new terrain and keep its texture as well. And we can also delete terrain as well with these easy to use blocks. So if you're creating something like a building and you want to remove all the windows, that's really easy to do. Final thing I want to show you then before we end this video off is if we actually edit the animation of this 
And I'm just going to duplicate this to create a second animation. We can actually create some really interesting shapes. So what I'm going to do is just delete this. I'm going to grab just a brush tool and I'm going to draw just some random blue shape, just like so. Let's go for that. I'm then going to get the hitbox, right click, and I'm going to do guess polygon shape. Now this is roughly what I want. I will just quickly move in a little bit more of the shape to get it close to what it was before. And that will do. So that's on animation two. I'm also going to take my remover. I'm going to do something very similar. But for this one, what I'm going to do is, again, we can pick any color for this. And I'm just going to do a line going down and around like so. And once again, I'm just going to right click and guess the polygon shape. And let's just fill in that other gap just really quickly. And we'll go for one more just there. And that'll do. And actually what this script will do, this code will do, is actually remove terrain in this shape as well. So it's not just limited to square blocks. So I'm going to change the animation now to animation 2. I'm going to change this one to animation 2 also. And again, if we want to see what the full shape is for this one, the easiest thing to do is just change the blend mode back to normal. And then we can see it at all times. It's actually best to keep it on this. This was me testing and playing around with some errors I'll have when recording. Um, but now we've got that in place, this is the new shape it will create. It's a bit of a weird shape. And we're also going to remove this S pattern in our terrain. And there you go. We've got an S pattern removed in our terrain and this new shape's been created. And as always, we can click and delete it. So that is it today for the main channel. However, if you're able to, please come join us on Patreon. We'll be looking at how to turn this into a full game of worms. But until then, I'll see you in the next video.